input. The typical peak sync input signal level is around minus 40 dBm and the required output is 2 watts peak sync. This is plus 33 dBm. As a result, the low power transposer must have a minimum gain of around 73 decibels. More gain is required in practice in order to give sufficient AGC range. The required gain at UHF to handle these signals can easily be obtained. A high degree of linearity is more difficult. Non-linearity results in intermodulation products being generated. These products can degrade the picture or interfere with other channels. Some means is therefore necessary to assess the non-linearity of the system. One method available is the three-tone test procedure. The three tones required for this test are shown and correspond to the three carrier frequencies F-vision, F-subcarrier and F-sound. This test is a precise measurement that requires no other signal to be applied to the input of the transposer. The equipment will therefore have to be removed from service for this check. If these three tones are applied to the input of the transposer, not only will they be amplified, but as you can see by monitoring the output of the transposer, extra frequency components have been generated. In particular, note the component at F vision plus and minus 1.57 megahertz. Amplifiers used in the transposer must be very linear. Current regulated, lightly driven, Class A amplifiers are common. These run at low efficiency. For example, a 2 watt amplifier may dissipate around 50 watts. The diagram shows the common emitter mode, which is more popular for this application than common base, since greater linearity can be realized. Base lead inductance leads to positive feedback in common base, which degrades linearity. The overall output frequency error results from errors radiated by the parent and also the accuracy of the input and output local oscillators. Transposition errors are minimized in modern transposers by using synthesizing techniques in the local oscillator chains and one common high stab source. Ideally, the transposer should be able to handle input and output offsets. The offset can be positive or negative. The standard value is 26.042 kilohertz, which is five-thirds of line frequency. Modern transposers use special techniques in their synthesizers to cope with offsets. Now we are finished with the general theory and it is time to look into the silver streak itself. Let's go over to Peter for this. This section is designed to give an understanding of the silver streak units without going into details of how to repair units on the bench at component level. The section is divided into four subsections for convenience. The TM4M502 was designed as a low-cost four-channel transposer to provide a service to small communities. Two and four-channel versions are available and it is designed for minimum on-site maintenance. The TM4M502 is commonly known as Silver Streak. It is the successor to the BBC Designs Department Blue Streak transposer. Whereas the Blue Streak contains six active modules per service, which could be replaced by unplugging them, the Silver Streak contains only one active wideband unit. The other unit, known as the personality panel, contains the passive components which determine the characteristics of the wideband unit. For demonstration purposes, we shall use the Wood Norton four-channel silver streak, which receives transmissions from Ridge Hill. A common distribution amplifier feeds the four transposer inputs. 
power is supplied by two switched mode power supply units. These are modified commercially available units. The distribution amplifier receives power from both power supplies via isolating diodes. With a four channel transposer, failure of one power supply will result in loss of two of the four transposer channels. Two channel transposers have the center panels replaced with a diode unit so that either power supply can power both channels. Such an arrangement would be used when both the BBC and the IBA are providing separate equipments for their own services. This diagram shows the essential elements of a silver streak system. Common to all channels is a distribution amplifier and often a group filter. If fitted, the group filter selects the group of input channels and rejects the channels outside this range, which might cause spurious products within the passband of one of the channels. The input and output filters are mounted on the personality panel. The input filter selects the required input channel. The output filter selects the required output mixer sideband and rejects the local oscillator frequency. Let's have a quick look at the filter response. The vertical sensitivity of the display is 10 dBs per division. The markers are at 5 MHz intervals. The filter provides a high attenuation to unwanted channels and if we switch to 1 dBs per division it can be seen that the response is within half a dB over the required channel. The IF amplifier is one of the modules mounted on the wideband unit. Also contained in this module are the input and output mixers. The local oscillator frequencies are generated in the dual synthesizer module. This is the most complicated unit in the transposer and is described in a separate subsection. The local oscillator frequencies are determined by wire links in the personality panel. The other unit on this panel is the UHF amplifier, which provides about 54 dBs of gain and also contains the gain control circuits. In the next subsection, we shall look in more detail at the units which provide amplification in the transposer. The distribution amplifier provides sufficient gain for the input signal to feed the transposers for all four services and to provide the input mixer with the correct level for optimum performance. Because this amplifier feeds all services, its reliability is a major consideration. The two stages of amplification are both in Engelbrecht configuration with 3 dB splitting and combining occurring in wireline couplers. Four outputs are obtained by splitting the signal twice with more wireline couplers. The physical layout closely resembles the block diagram. The input is at the bottom of the picture and the output at the top. The first amplifier stage is a transistor for best noise performance. The other stage uses a thick film amplifier circuit. The diodes to common the supplies are mounted in the center. We move on to the IF amplifier. The block diagram shows the entire unit which includes the input and output mixers. The mixers employ commercial double balanced mixers in Engelbrecht configuration. Considering the input mixer as an example, 3 dB couplers split the RF and local oscillator signals and the mixer outputs are combined by means of two transformers. The 50 MHz low pass filter eliminates unwanted mixer products. The output mixer 
is identical, except that the transformer windings are connected differently to maintain the correct phase relationships.